Hello, everybody, and welcome to our, our, my first little podcast about my art. Um, first off, my name is Bobby Martin. Uh, I'm an enrolled member of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma, and I'm a Native American artist. Um, my my goal uh, during this uh, podcast is just kind of raise awareness on Native American issues, um, raise awareness on... Uh, just like social uh, issues, and then uh, just basically sh share my love of art um, to everybody out there. Um, you know, art can be used in many ways to uh, help people with depression, stress, um, you know, bringing families together, occupying young minds, um, you know, as myself. Hopefully in, in later episodes, you know, I get more in detail on why I paint. Um, but today, specifically, I want to talk about one of my paintings. Um, first off, I, I want to say, uh, if anybody out there is struggling with a, in a relationship with there's domestic violence, and you feel like you need help, uh, reach out. There's hotlines, there's shelters. Um, you know, nobody is going to know what's going on in your household unless you reach out for help. So that's number one. Um, you know, if, if you if you are in a situation where you need help, just please reach out because there's help out there for you. Um, I know you sometimes people might seem like they're kind of stuck, whether it be uh, financial situations, whether it be, uh, you know, their housing situation, their school situation. Um, all those things are, are uh, nothing if you don't have your uh, your your peace, you know. Um, so, uh, that being said, we're going to talk about this painting here that's going to pop up and, uh, the reason why I painted it. Um, the reason why, uh, number one, while I'm doing this episode is because it's, uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And, uh, that's really important, um, you know, because a, lo a lot of times domestic violence gets swept under the rug because you don't see it. You know, all you see is what people project. You're not in someone's homes. Um, you don't know uh, the inner workings of people's relationships. Um, and, and a lot of times people put on that fake smile, you know. Um, so there's uh, there's little signs. There's uh, little things that you can maybe pick up on. Uh, if, if, for example, you might think a family member is going through that, struggling. Um, uh, all that, you know, I'm, I'm just an artist, you know. Um, I would say uh, Google it, research it, um, look up these hotlines, and uh, find uh, find out how you can help raise awareness, and, and you know, look for signs, and uh, maybe help out a family member or a friend. Um, I'm coming to you from a, a different perspective, as uh, coming to you as a child uh, through this. Um, so my experience with domestic violence starts when I was a young person and again um, this is not uh, in any way shape or form I'm just gonna throw this out there uh, it's not me complaining about my childhood that's not what this is a hundred percent this is not me saying look at me look at me look at what I've been through this is definitely not me pointing fingers at the way I grew up this is definitely me not pointing at any members of my family um, this is just my story, um, and everybody has one. Um, so again, take it uh, take it as that. You know, um, I'm not looking for attention. Again, the reason why I'm talking about this is just to raise awareness. Uh, you know, I might kind of ramble on a little bit, uh, just because I, I really don't want uh, my message to get intertwined with uh, the issue at hand, which is domestic violence. So let's go ahead and talk about this. I painted this uh, last year to uh, for a domestic violence uh, uh, event that was being held in Fresno. I did a couple different paintings. Um, and uh, so art, why is art so important in our community? Number one is it gives a visual, right? So um, everything in life is visual. Uh, an example of that is our uh, relatives uh, at the border. You know, you can watch the news and they can talk about 
immigration and they can talk about uh, people crossing the border and it doesn't really uh, sit with you until you see images of children crying being ripped from their parents. Um, and this, that, that's the visual part of it. You know, when you see something, it triggers something and it, and it affects you. So that's what I use my art for. I use it to trigger. Um, I use it to, uh, to bring out people's emotions, to bring out conversations, and to uh, just to really raise awareness and, and make people talk about issues that are, are, are really hard to talk about. Um, so I'm going to get into my childhood. Some of my earliest memories of a child uh, is of adults fighting. Um, and for, uh, it's, it's weird to talk about, man. Uh, so every human being is different, right? Uh, some people, uh, they're, the way they're made up, some people can handle these things. Some people can't. Um, age. Age is a, a huge factor on, on how children are raised and what they're raised around. An example, uh, I have children. Uh, I have a 7-year-old and a 13-year-old. Uh, if I was fighting with their mother, physically fighting with their mother, and my children witnessed that, it would drastically affect my seven-year-old more than my 13-year-old. Not that it wouldn't affect my 13-year-old. But as a child, you don't really understand what's going on. So um, when, when grown people are fighting, and especially at a young age, um, and this is just from experience from what I've gone through, four, five, six years old, the only people you know in life are your mom and dad. That's all you know, uh, and your siblings, okay? They're the ones that protect you. They're the ones that feed you. They're the ones that give you everything you need. So they are everything to you. When a young person's mind is developing and they witness uh, their protectors harming one another, when they witness their protectors uh, screaming at one another, when they witness their protectors punching holes in the wall, when they witness uh, all of these tragic things that go on in, in so many households across the United States, it affects people. Uh, it affected me uh, a lot, um, a whole lot. Uh, so much so that I'm doing these paintings now just because I want to use my story and hopefully, uh, you know, let other people know that you know, it's okay to go through these struggles. Um, so as a kid, when I would see my, uh, my parents fight, uh, I just wanted them to stop, man. Just like, please stop the screaming. I was just a child. I didn't understand it. Like, I don't understand why my protectors, my everything, why are they so mad? Why are they putting hands on one another? Why are they um, just doing things that uh, that scare people, scare me as a child? Uh, I didn't understand it. Uh, so what your mind does is when you're when you're such a young person, and and you're developing who you are going to become as a human being. So that's all happens at, at at very young ages. You know, people say from like you know zero seven up to seven years old is your most important time of your life because that's when you pretty much direct who you're going to become as a human being uh, or how you react to certain situations. Um, because of those early uh, things that I went through, and, uh, and I'm not sitting here saying, oh, man, look at me. I went through so much, man. Like, that's not what I'm saying. There is so many people out there that's been through so much more than me and and i'm sure they're flourishing in life uh, every human being is different you know uh, and the way I, the way i explain this to some people is you can get two different people from two different walks of life and uh, an example is when they go to war uh, our soldiers come back and, and and struggle with the things they've seen and the things they go through um, but they're both human beings, right? Uh, one human being can come back from war and see the same exact thing as his uh, squad mate. And, and one might not be able to function in society. Uh, 
one might uh, turn to alcohol, one might turn to anger, one might, one might not be able to have a normal relationship, one might not know how to process the things that he's went through. The other person might flourish. The other person might come home from war and just become a model citizen and never struggle with anger, never struggle with, with hate. And that's great, man. That's amazing that some people are able to do that. Um, but that doesn't mean that the person who can't do that is any weaker or is any less strong or any less... Uh, a strong warrior or, or in anything less. It's just how we're made up, you know. Uh, we're all human beings, but we're all different. We're all unique to our own our own beliefs and our own uh, way on how we process things. So I know I'm rambling on here because just because I'm kind of avoiding really get in, getting into it. Um, but domestic violence is just really important to me. How it affected me growing up is violence. Okay, so I was taught at a young age that uh, that violence is okay. That um, I was taught at a young age to make someone understand your viewpoint is to raise your voice and to be more dominant to the other person. I learned that, uh, and I lived my first half of my life like that, um, and. Uh, and it's an ugly way to live your life, um, you know, like uh, just an example, uh, you know, in second grade, I was missing a lot of school, you know, uh, I don't want to get into why, uh, but I would purposely go to school looking for a fight. And, uh, and for someone who grew up in a broken home, maybe you can relate. But I went to uh, 12 different schools throughout my school, okay? Um, so what does that mean? That means for every year I was in school, I changed a school. Sometimes multiple times in a year. Sometimes, you know, maybe I'll be in a school for two years and then I'll change. So what that did is I didn't make a lot of friends. Um, just because I'm constantly moving, constantly going back and forth between parents. Um, and then in high school, I was getting kicked out of, of, of schools uh, because of bad choices. Um, so that's just another check in the box, you know, that made it harder for me growing up. Um, you know, I go to a different school. I don't know nobody. I'm a loner. Uh, on top of that, I'm angry. On top of that, I'm worried about, you know, my parents fighting. I'm worried about when the next time I'm going to see one of my parents just because of, of going back and forth. I'm worried about the next time. When they see each other, are they going to fight one another again? Um, so as a young kid, you know, all these things are going through my head. And uh, and I wanted to hurt people. Uh, and this started at a very young age. And uh, and what I learned is, is when I would get in a fight at school, I would get suspended, right? So I'd get sent to uh, home. Well, there wasn't no one to watch me. So my dad would pick me up, and then he would take me to my grandma's house. And... Uh, and my grandmother and my grandfather, uh, like a, uh, a lot of people don't have a, a safe space or a, a space that they feel safe. Um, and, and a lot of time, it's really it's really uh, just what they think. You know, a lot of time they just don't feel safe, even though they might be. Uh, maybe there's not someone letting them know that, hey, it's going to be all right, you know, uh, just because that's important. Letting somebody, letting a child know that it's going to be okay, you know. Um, so when I would go to my grandmother's house, that's where I would be told hey you're gonna be okay you know uh, so that was my safe place and uh, just a backstory on my grandparents uh, and this goes this has affect me for the rest of my life this perception of life 
they lived in an extremely small house. Okay? As a kid who, uh, we weren't rich, we weren't, I guess you can say we were poor, you know, food stamps. Um, when you're from that, you don't know that you're poor. You know, I w would wear my cousin's clothes and uh, hand-me-downs and, and uh, you know, I wrestled in third grade. And there's, you know, we joke about it now, but in that picture, my little toe is hanging out of my shoe. And it's funny, man. It's funny now. You laugh at it. But at the time, you know, I was just that poor kid in school who uh, had his toe hanging out of his shoe. And uh, I don't know why I wasn't wearing socks, but you could see my toe. Um, just, you know, that's just an example of just, you know, you don't really realize it. Um, and my grandparents were so happy. That was such my safe space. And maybe this wasn't the fact when they were younger. My grandpa was a World War II vet. Uh, we honor him. We honor my grandmother who went through her struggles uh, with mental illness. But, man, I would show up there as an angry kid. And, uh, and I would just feel safe. You know, she would cook me food. I was a fat boy. Still a fat boy. You know, uh, she would cook me food. Um, she would let me help her cook food. And then seeing how she interacted with my grandpa, like they were laughing, they would joke with each other. Um, they were just happy, man, you know, like, uh, and they were a lot older. My dad was the youngest of 10. And my grandmother had my dad in her 40s, maybe mid to late 40s. Um, so they were older, you know. Um, but, man, did she still play with me? She still made me feel you know, uh, loved and, uh, and what that taught me as an, as an adult is, uh, that's what I want, man. Like, that's what I want. And money in my bank or cars or nothing else would make me feel that happiness. Unless it's like that pure happiness of just being with the, person that you love and just loving life just being happy like you don't need all these things you know and that's how I try to I live my life now man I know I'm getting off topic you know I ramble a lot but uh so that was my safe space and uh and I actually got held back in the second grade just because I was fighting so much you know I would get suspended a lot and uh it was just because I wanted to go spend time with my grandma and my grandpa and uh and man just just the uh, seeing their relationship it, it just it gave me hope as a young person man like you know coming from my mom and dad who would fight and then seeing this older couple my grandparents who were just in love with one another and would laugh with one another and they weren't yelling at each other you know, they did things for one another. It's just like, it just showed me that that's what it's, that's what life's about, you know. Life's not about what a lot of other people uh, want to push on you. Um, so why is it important? Because I learned all these bad habits as a child and... I honestly could not remember the last time I had gotten an argument with my wife. We just, we never argue, ever. Um, we just don't do it. It's just, uh, we've never done it. And why is that? Um, number one, I think I got lucky. Um, but growing up, you know, I was always fighting uh, when I moved out, just like a lot of people who deal with, who grew up, kind of like how I grew up. Anger is everything, man. That's literally all you know. So uh, for any little thing, man, I was punching holes in my wall. You know, my first apartment that I moved out in, you know, I didn't get my deposit back. That's for sure, man, because there was holes in the wall. The second place I lived at, there's holes in the wall. And a lot, a lot of that had to do with... Um, uh, you know, drink, drinking, uh, 
just making mistakes earlier on that I made in my life. And uh, that's all for like another another episode here. So we're t today we're just basically talking on domestic violence, but uh, but one thing that that I learned is uh, that you can really unlearn all these bad habits that you learn, you know. And and part of that is just uh, raising awareness. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that you you're going to go out and attack a, a, a people in a relationship that fight? Nah, man, that's not the way to do it. Um, just because when even even now, even with me as, as peaceful as I try to be every day, I try to just not to be into people's mix. You know, people still come at me the wrong way, and it's human nature to uh, puff up on them. You know, like when someone comes at you hard, you want to come back at them, um, and and I don't want to. I don't want to think like that. Um, and those are habits that I'm trying to break. Just because, you know, you're never going to change someone's mind yelling over them. I mean, that's why this whole political thing is just driving me crazy right now, man. It's just everybody's yelling at the top of their lungs. So uh, that's just how I see it, man. Like, But if you come at somebody and you talk to them with respect and you find them help and you find them uh, and you let them know that, that all these bad habits are learned habits. And just like any other habit, you can break it. You know, uh, you know. there's people who quit smoking. There's people who quit drinking. All those are habits. So is jumping to anger or having the uh, mental strength to withhold your own uh, impulses to, uh, to uh, respond with anger back. Even with me, even online, you know, people say some crazy things to me. And sometimes I want to just go crazy, man, at them, you know, just back at them. And, uh, and I pray on it. So I'm a person of prayer. Um, I pray. I try to pray every day. I do pray every day. I give thanks every day. Um, but that night, that might not be for you. And that's fine, too, man. I'm not. I'm not one of those that come out here and say, you got to do this. And this is how you're going to find it by this way. This is no, you just, you, you give everybody all these options and kind of let them decide what's going to work for them. You know, uh, what worked for me is group. So I've been in counseling forever. I deal with severe mental illness, um, like debilitating mental illness you know it's a struggle um, but group therapy being around other people and just hearing their stories hearing their experiences it, it really gives you a sense of community and I know that might be a community you, you might not want to be part of but a community you do want to be part of is people who went through the same thing as you and they're better and those are the people you want to surround yourself with it's kind of the same concept of just like AA or uh, like my my family that are that struggle all you that struggle with addiction. You know, you surround yourself with other addicts in recovery. Why do you do that? Um, just because you want to be told. You don't want to be told. For me, this is my thing. In, in counseling. Yes, somebody who goes to school and gets all these degrees, is, it's going to help me. You know, they, they know what to tell me. They know what to say. But if I'm talking to somebody who grew up just like me, somebody who's seen the things I'm saying, and they're telling me that this is what worked for them, I mean, automatically, that's who I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to more. It's just the way it is. It's just experience, you know. Um, so that's why group therapy helps with me. So what does that mean? It means relate people in the relationships. How do you uh, how do you talk to somebody about their domestic violence? I don't know the answer to that. But what I can do is I can paint this picture, and hopefully, a family will see it, and they'll see that picture of that little kid crying, and then they'll look at their little kid, and they'll be like, "Man, is this what I'm doing? Is this what I'm is this what I'm really?" doing to my kids right now um, and hopefully 
they're a type of person that will be like, man, I don't want that. I don't want to do that. Because a lot of time we don't know. You know, my parents didn't know. Like, that's just what they were taught. And that's just what the the environment that they were around. You know? Um, so it, this is nobody's fault. This is not... This is nobody's fault, but what is our fault is not trying to help. So this is my way of helping this little podcast here um, and and showing this art. Because a lot of times people think of domestic violence. They don't really think about the kids. You know, they just think about uh, uh, the women and the men that go through it. Obviously, they need the attention also. Uh, but from me, my perspective is from the child. I can't give you a perspective from a woman's. Um, I can tell you, I would imagine that's probably the same feeling as I did as a child. It's probably what a woman goes through when her husband is abusive. Um, scared to death, you know. Uh, I can just imagine just like when I was a child crying, not really understanding. I'm sure that's what women go through. And that's scary, man. That's a, that's a scary thought that uh, that there's men out there that would even do that too. You know, and, and I'm not throwing shade on men. You know, that's one thing we have to stop. Obviously, if someone is not going to be able to get help, man. But a lot of these things are learned okay um, I don't know what percentage I had to be be the person I am today probably very small to be honest with you someone who grew up around the things that I've seen um, probably had a very small percentage of being a productive human being and being in a healthy relationship it took me a while to get there. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've been in some toxic relationships. And uh, I've done a lot of yelling. I've done a lot of fighting. Uh, even in my early relationships in high school, man. Just toxic relationships. Um, just because you don't know how to act. Like, you know, I was a young human being. And that's all that I knew. Um, so we have to teach these people, man. Uh, obviously, if they're beating on somebody. Uh, obviously... They need to be to handled correctly. Uh, but early stages of, of people's uh, temperament uh, should be acknowledged. And, uh, man, let's get these people help, you know. Or the women, you know, if there's signs that maybe you're picking up on. And, and it's hard. It's hard for people to talk about this because they're embarrassed of it. They're ashamed of it. Especially if there's children involved, they have a feeling like they have to stay together. Um, so it, 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 there's really not any one right answer other than just throw as many resources as you can at them. And if my little painting might help somebody, might trigger somebody, or uh, give an example, when I showed this painting on in my studio, um, I would know, I would 100% know who went through it because they would be walking around my studio and then they would stop and they would see that painting and a few times people would cry right in front of me and uh and i just i knew it man i knew it i knew what they were going through and that's why i painted it and uh and that's what i wanted to be used for you know this is not about hey look at my painting no it's like hey look at this tool that you can use to maybe trigger somebody, not trigger somebody in a bad way, but maybe, hey, look at this painting, look at this child. You know, let's um, let's not do that. You know, um, because luckily, you know, I was exposed to, exposed to both worlds. You know, I was taken out of certain situations and shown. Uh, I was shown, probably when I was like 13 or 14, I was shown uh, what normal families look like. And it blew my mind. I was like, what? You know, people have parties where nobody's drinking. People, families have get-togethers where there's nobody yelling. Like the whole party. 
everybody's just having conversations and nobody's screaming at somebody and there's not someone drunk over here and, and somebody over here doing this. Um, I honestly didn't know that existed, you know, until I was about 13 or 14. Um, and a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people don't get exposed to that. So all they get exposed to is the negative and the hate and the anger. Um, that's a hard hole to dig out of, man. I struggle with it every day. So, uh, so what can we do together, man? We got to do better. We got to do better. And it, it really starts with just awareness. So, uh, sharing stories, man, sharing stories and talking about it. Hearing like me, hearing other people's stories gives me hope, man. Like, Hey man, look at this dude. He went through this and look at him. He's successful. What's successful? happy I don't care if you're homeless on the street man if you got a smile on your face I'm happy for you uh, I know people who are homeless and and I know people who are been homeless I know people who live in small mobile homes man like my family have tons of mobile homes I'm not gonna sit here and, and lie and they're happy people you know like uh, that's what I want I don't want to, when I say I, I want to see people who've gone through it succeed, you can have all the, you can have the best job in the world, have money in the bank, the nicest cars, and, uh, and just be an empty soul, man. That's not success. Success is my grandma and grandpa, man. That's what I want. I want my grandkids to be able to come and see me and my wife be happy that success man am i successful hell yeah do i struggle yep you know um do i struggle a lot yep would i be able to do all the things that i do without the support from my family nope you know a lot of it is support you know some people are strong enough to do this on their own i'm not i, I wasn't that man i was a broken human being you know, thank God I, I thank God I met the, the woman that I did when I did, and thank God I have these beautiful children because they keep me going. You know, uh, they're the reason why I dug myself out. Uh, so those of you that did it on your own, props to you, man. That is that is awesome. If you're able to go through some serious stuff and make it out without a support system, you are those warriors that come back from war and don't need nothing you know you're that you're that few for those of you that aren't like me don't be ashamed of it man don't be ashamed to reach out and ask for help so share this podcast with somebody you think is going through it share my painting and uh and just share happiness man let's stop trying to bring people down it's just it's exhausting man you know and don't ever feel like uh, you're not successful man just because you don't have a big house or a nice car or uh, you know base your success on how you love people like if you're able to care for people if you're able to go and do things for other people without wanting anything in return you're a straight up legit human being, bro. You made it. You're successful. So this is going to be the end of my podcast, man. I'm just sitting here rambling and rambling and rambling on, you know. Um, but share my painting. Uh, you know, I tag it all the time, man, because it's powerful, man. Art, visual, visual, visual. This is not like, hey, look at my painting. I'm such a good painter. Look what I did. Nope. That's not what I'm about, man. Share this painting. And even grip. Give somebody else credit for it. I honestly do not care about that whatsoever. Just share it. Um, unless it's my mural. I want the credit for that. Just because that's something I haven't really done that much. So if you tag, if you go take pictures of my mural, please tag me in. I'd appreciate it. Um, but for this stuff, that that's this kind of message. 
this message is more important than my acknowledgement. Um, and that's how it should always be, you know. Um, the message is always more powerful than the person presenting it. Um, and that's what this painting is. It's, it's, I painted it for the people. I painted it for the community. Um, so use it, you know, use it as a way to uh, show people. You know, and not everybody's going to get it, man. Some people, it, it, it's going to be hard. Some people are going to fight against it. But there's help out there. So please reach out, share information, share this painting, share shelter information, share hotlines. Again, this is uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So let's get that awareness out here and uh, stop uh, just being so engulfed in this hate that's going on right now, man. And uh, we'll talk about that next week a little bit. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about um, my Never Forget painting. Um, so if you want to send me some questions about maybe any other of my paintings or why I paint them, just for the, these beginning first episode, this is how we're going to do it. Just people sending me uh, uh, sending me questions, and then um, and we'll go from there. But uh, So I asked this, and this is the reason why I did this one. So that being said, man, we're going to go ahead and end this. And uh, my apologies uh, if uh, if I offended anybody. You know, that's not the purpose of this. Uh, again, I'm not trying to say if you're out there struggling, man, and you can't get past it, if you can't get past your childhood anger, it doesn't make me any stronger than you, man. It's just, it's a struggle. I struggle. I struggle every day, man. Every day is a struggle. So there is no winner or loser in this. Some people will be able to uh, excel and be able to live a normal life. And so again, again, I'm going to keep saying it, man. Some of you guys are going to be like me, and that's okay, man. There's counseling out there. There's a lot of things out there for uh, people on this side of the domestic violence, which means the kids part. Um, so search for it. There's groups. Hit me up, man. If you want to talk, you know, I don't do phone calls. I don't talk on the phone at all, um, just for my own personal reasons. But if you hit me a, if you hit me a, a question online, man, I'll, I'll respond back. So uh, hit me up, man. If you if you, anybody else wants to talk about it, tell me your story. Um, just talk to people, you know, because when you keep that uh, – when you keep these things inside, which I did for so long, man, you got to give it to the fire, man. You got to transform it. You know, in Native communities, man, that's what kind of like what we say is, you know, give it to the fire, man. Give it, transform it, and let it go up. You know, just like when you put, put things in, in fire, the transformation between its object to its next source, you know, with anything, paper. What does it do? It turns to smoke and ash. It goes up. So uh, so give it to the fire, man. Give your hate to the fire. Give your, your pride to the fire. You know, if someone's yelling at you in your face, man, I honestly can care less, man. And at one time in my life, that's all I had. All I had in my life was how good I can fight or, or how loud I can get. And that's the stuff stupidest uh, for me and I, I don't put no judge on nobody man if you guys are still living that life for me it's helped me and i'm happy man i'm not that mad angry person anymore looking for a reason to puff up uh, my goal in life when i first started therapy man and and i said it i want to be able to go somewhere and have someone Look at me in the eye like they want some. And I want to be able to just smile at them. Just tell them what's up. Because that prideful alpha, uh, man, it's toxic, man. That is toxic. Way. Nobody is going to take my happiness away from my kids and my wife. If I'm going to respond to this person, mad dogging me, what does that have to do with my wife and my kids? Because that's my goal, right? My goal is to provide a secure home 
and a father figure for my children. Fighting someone on the streets and screaming at somebody in the streets is not going to accomplish that. And that's, that's how I started to turn my thinking around. Is if you put your all your priorities, all your being, all your soul in one thing, and that one thing for me is for my wife and my kids, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. All the pride, all that stuff is gone. Thank God, man, because that's a toxic way of life. So, uh, yeah, man. So if somebody mad dog at me, man, that's your that's yours. Punk it. Tell everybody you punk me out. I'm proud to say it. That's that's how I want to live my life. And uh, and if you want to feel that too, man, I know it sounds weird, and I know there's a lot of people. If there's anybody from from my neck of the woods, you probably think I'm talking crazy right now, man. But I'm telling you, you know, no one's taking my time away from my wife and kids there's nothing that's number one and being prideful and uh that'll take away from it man and that's the same thing with someone screaming at you you know you want to scream back you want to talk louder you want to get your point across it's all toxic way of thinking man and it can be changed i promise you it can uh, so i'm gonna cut it out man thanks everybody for for listening and uh, so I ramble a lot, man. This is just going to be a, a rambling podcast for now. You know, maybe after COVID, I'll be able to start having guests and stuff. But for now, you know, keep looking at my art, checking out my art, and uh, just keep spreading that love, man. And uh, and if you're going through it, hey, man, it gets better. I promise you, man, because I've been there, and uh, I still go through it. Every day is a struggle, but it gets better. So, uh, peace out.